Hello, this is Dia Damson, and today I am going to do a really cute painting, and it's by uh, Paul Cezanne, and it will be still art. Um, a lot of things to learn when you're doing this painting, and the most important is um, have fun. So I really fast catch this. We have um, tons of circles, and we have few lines for separation of the elements wall, table, and front table. So you have um, two lines that are horizontal and two lines that are vertical to the side. And the rest is ovals and circles. Um, and if you have done the peach tutorial, how to paint the peaches and or still art, um, go and check that one out. It will help you with this. Now with um, Cezanne, the most important thing is everything needs to be a lot simple and not too uh, great of a detail. So um, observe, I'm going to be quiet on parts and obviously speaking on parts, but I am just using um, dry on wet technique. Now my uh, painting is very small, so I want a lot more control over my little elements and I am not just brushing but I'm kind of dabbing the brush to create um, this uneven spotty um, kind of texture so those little peaches actually get um, kind of a soft look um, and since um, some of the paint is there but it's not really wet but it's slightly damp um, it will soften the edge where I'm placing the new paint around um, and it's gonna be a lot of uh, going back and forward but if you do one peach you can do a lot of peaches so there's going to be cleaning up and putting colors and when you're doing the colors think of for any color that you decide to use think of three colors for that color the main color which is number two and then you have one down a lighter version of it and a lighter or a darker version so you have the three different hues for each color or you can mix it slightly with something that plays well like for example how I'm doing here the yellow orange and really dark red and sometimes for me to create that dark red I will add either um, brown in it or a little bit of blue but very tiny so we're not going to purple we're just darkening the red slightly and make sure your elements dry in between um, especially when you're going from one peach to another because otherwise they're gonna start merging together. But because I'm dabbing, I'm creating this really soft uh, look of the cover of the peach, is the skin of the peach. So it looks too easy, um, but just because of the technique, I'm just dabbing, lifting and dropping my brush. So um, that adds this um, uneven kind of terrain on the surface of the fruit. And because they're peaches, we definitely want to emphasize on that line. And in the dark, like little shadow area there where we definitely probably have some other fruit beneath um, do the same thing do kind of the dabbing uh, motion of your brush lift and drop lift and drop so you don't create one um, even area brushed over I'm using whatever it's left on the brush to kind of outline a little bit and this is where oh, my camera is not really doing us a favor it's not zooming properly um, so I'm going to add a line around the plate because we're looking at that plate from directly the top 
and the perspective of everything is a little bit interesting but I am not going to question um, Cezanne because he is the beginning of the 20th century um, even um, uh, Picasso have said that he is the father of us all um, he has changed from impressionism where everything in the 19th century was concentrating on that and entered the 20th century way of painting so he is the father of the 20th century um, way of painting so it's really cool to go and read a little bit about him he is simplifying elements he is and i will do another painting of his um, and i'll post it right after it is um, a scene from uh, a window or he was probably out somewhere painting i'm not sure i'm gonna do a little more research on that one but it's really really cool so for a beginner these are perfect things to do for the table, the same thing. I'm using the tip of the brush, but also the whole body of the brush. And again, if you look at it, think of three colors. Your lighter color, your medium, which will be the color you want, and the darker one. Um, and go with those three colors. And of course, whatever we need shadow, a little bit uh, more. Um, use of especially on yellow you don't want to use purple so much but maybe uh, darken a ochre with a little bit of brown or blue to get a shadow under the plate under the pear and for the pears uh, pretty much we're going to do almost the same thing as a peach except we are going to have it in green so we have a highlight little area for the highlights and then we're gonna cover the rest with one color just like this and then we're going to start to play with the, our shadows and highlights now i use the green if you observe his painting the original painting there is a lot of colors everywhere from um, the peaches and the pears they are present also on that yellow cloth on the table so here is our dark side and i just added a line then with a wet clean brush i'm gonna go and run around just next to the area that i added that darker shadow and um, that is going to help that paint, the darker paint, to move into the area where I just touched with a very slightly wet brush. And my favorite part, by the way, on this painting is the wall, and you're gonna see why. So, adding a little more shadow underneath, and again, dabbing creating that uneven element. There's our last peach here, or apple, whatever it is. Adding a little bit of green in it, and a lot of times I will go back with a clean and slightly white brush and move things around, or clean things. Uh, lift paint so we're getting to the point where we have to add the most important things in our elements ground them put a shadow defined so slight outline not all the way The color is a very transparent uh, dark blue. You can mix, if you have lighter blue, mix uh, blue with a little bit of black and just use very little, have uh, very little paint on your brush. 
adding a little bit of green because this plate also takes some of the colors from the surrounding elements. This is um, dirty brown, which is brown with a little bit of black in it, and emphasizing on our shadow. So this is the ochre with brown and a little bit of black. So I always do the shadow in a um, few different parts. I add a light shadow, uh, then a medium shadow, and then I add the deep shadow, which usually it's much closer to the element that it's casting the shadow. So for the wall, really elementary very transparent dirty blue whatever color you create um, black and blue but very transparent very little paint and don't just brush with one simple brush stroke um, use few and now we're gonna start painting the back and we have um, that element there which could be a door, it could be just a wall, I am not sure. But the colors are very simple. So we everything is blue or dirty blue, more blue or less blue. So you're gonna use a lot of hues of the blue. And again, try not to just cover in one, one brush stroke, but try to add as many hues as possible of that color to that element that is very little but it will add a lot to our painting like you see here i will have darker and lighter colors starting with a very light color of whatever color i decide to paint would not matter it's more about the technique than the color and then i will cover different areas with different strength of that color and I will leave a, some areas much lighter, like for example, the diamond will have a little area that it's almost like popping out. It's still going to be slightly blue, but very, very transparent. Um, and we are going to add deeper blue next to that lighter color to emphasize on that color to make it seem like it's coming towards us like that lighter area it's going to push get pushed forward by the shadow and that's why your highlights and shadows are so important you can't just do one or the other you need them to uh, kind of create the element together just like here if you see that diamond that's the most important part from the whole wall or door whatever it is um, and the fact that we are doing as many hues as possible. We almost have it from almost completely um, pale, invisible blue to the darkest, deepest blue I could create with the color I have. And um, again, just lift and drop your brush as many times as possible. And that will be very helpful. I will add in his painting there is not just blue so I'm gonna add a little bit of brown and green here you don't have to do it you can just do it with the blue it's totally fine I hope you are having fun with this painting let me know what you think how your painting turned out or if you have any questions I would love to answer them I will not have the traceable for this painting on my Facebook page because it's very elementary as shapes but if you want me to I will do it for you and it's absolutely free you just have to ask um, and please don't forget to subscribe click that notification bell and have fun with this so happy painting thanks for stopping by bye